Hey, what's up, bros? It's Nico here, and today I'm going to play some Age of Empires 2 HD edition. I'm going to play the campaigns. The idea is to play all of them, but now I'm going to play the first one, which is uh, Age of Kings. These uh, three expansions are pretty new. These one are the classic ones, so yeah. Here are five campaigns. The first one is William Wallace. This is like a tutorial, but I'm going to do it. All right. Age of Empires 2 is about empire building, combat and conquest. You start from humble beginnings, a small village in the Dark Ages. You explore to expand your borders, conduct trade to boost your economy, and research technologies to grow your civilization into a mighty empire. But there are difficulties too. Cunning enemies and rivals that oppose you, powerful castles to destroy, tyrants to bring down. And if you're skillful and a little lucky, you just might build a wonder of the world and create an empire that will stand the test of time. To learn how empires are built, help our first hero, William Wallace, in his fight against his oppressors. We are without a leader. The dead king of Scotland has no heir. War creeps in from the south, where Edward Longshanks, the avaricious king of England, has returned from successful campaigns to conquer Wales and France. As Longshanks turns his attention to Scotland, the shadow of fear settles across the highlands. The English have thousands of Welsh longbowmen, hundreds of knights on horseback, and dozens of siege weapons. We Scottish have a rabble of untrained soldiers who do not even know how to march in a straight line. Well, we must act soon. If we have any chance of resistance, we need to forge an army by any means necessary. The English are terrorizing all of Scotland! And it's time for us to fight back. But if we're to defeat them, every one of us will need to learn how to march and fight. Follow the path to the blue flag. First, click the soldier. Good. Now, right click near the blue flag. Move to the next flag. Click the soldier. Then this campaign right is uh, about William Wallace. I felt like I'm in the Braveheart movie. If you didn't watch it, I highly recommend you to do it. Excellent. To move to the next flag, you must walk through the black area. Very, very good movie. One of my favorite ones. Moving into the black area reveals more of the map. The black area represents unexplored territory. That's unexplored all there is to. territory. Now go on to the next flag where you'll meet some allied soldiers. Oh. To move all your soldiers at once, click near the units and drag around them. Then right click to move them. Try moving your soldiers to the next flag. Did all your units make it to the flag? The road ahead is guarded by an English outpost. Scroll up to the outpost building by moving the mouse to the very top of the screen. Then click the red outpost. The red outpost. Right click the outpost to attack. Take that shit down. Yeah. Britain. The outpost is destroyed. 
That should slow the English raids. Keep following the path to the village. Home sweet home. Home sweet home. Wait. The English are angry that you destroyed their outpost. They're coming to attack your village. Your oh shit. Just click your soldiers and right click the red English soldiers to attack. Defeat the enemy soldiers and you will have won your first battle. Kill him. Good job. Victory. Now you know how to fight back against the English army. You are victorious. That was pretty easy. What the fuck is that? There is a, a militia in the forest. Scotland has soldiers now, if only a few. But if we are to turn back the greed of Edward Longchamps, we will need many more recruits. Much more gold in our coffers. These ancient stones and oaks around us will soon be steeped in the blood of clansmen. Okay, time to the second one. An army marches on its stomach, or so the old saying goes. My clansmen have been farming and tending sheep for hundreds of years, but gathering enough food to feed an army is a different matter entirely. Without a strong economy, the meager forces that we've cobbled together will collapse again. To support the Scottish army, you'll need to build up your stockpile of resources. To win, gather 50 food, 50 wood, and 50 gold. To gather food from the forage bush, click a village. Then right click the forage bush near the blue flag. In the status area at the bottom of the screen, you can see how much food the villager is carrying. The villager continues to gather from the forage bush until he's carrying ten food. Yeah. Thank you. The villager will continue working for you, carrying the food to the town center. The amount of food you have is shown in the upper left corner of the screen. In addition to your food stockpile, you can see your current wood, gold, and stone stockpiles. The more villages you have, the faster you can gather resources. Assign your new villagers to gather food. Thank you. Zienega. Come on, boys. Gather some food. The music is pretty cool, quite nostalgic, at least for me because when I was a kid I played this quite a lot. Great! You now have 50 food. To win, also gather 50 wood and 50 gold. To gather wood, click a villager. Then well, right -click I don't need more food, so I'm going to take this D3 to mine some gold, and the other two Good. get in you some, found wood. some gold. Okay. I only need uh, 20 more gold, so I'm going to take this one here to take some extra gold and finish the this tutorial faster. 40 gold. Good job. Well, 
That's you don't have enough wood. You're well on your way to making a city. Excellent. You now have enough gold. That's right. We are victorious. A victory. Okay. Well, I was in the middle of a huge desert. Okay. Edward Longshanks, for all his disrepute, has shown military tactics in Wales, England, and France to be very effective, if not cruel and ruthless. He's indeed an enemy to be feared. The English sacked the town of Berwick upon Tweed. Would that I could call it a battle, but it was truly more of a massacre. Unless we organize our army, there will be more massacres to follow. I pray we can be ready for Long Shanks coming. Three, training the troops. In villages throughout the Highlands, there is grim talk of skirmishes between Scotland and England. We lost the city of Dunbar this week. Scottish defenders broke ranks and fled. The English have an army that is larger and better trained. To compete with them, we are going to need new recruits to pick up the spear, sword, or bow. We must remake these shepherds into soldiers. Right. Now. We will need many soldiers to defend our homeland. We'll start by creating villagers. Click your town center. Then click the Create Villager button in the lower left corner of the screen. It takes time for a villager to appear. Yeah. If your town center is selected, you can see the progress in the status area at the bottom of your screen. Good job! The villager has appeared next to your town center. Now, create another village. You need additional housing to support your population. To build a house, click a villager. Click the buildings button, click the build house button, then click where you want to build the house. I can more than select one more people. Builds yeah. a building, it will go up faster. Come on, boys. Good job. Try building another house. Each house supports five units. The population indicator at the top of the screen shows your current supportable population. Yeah, I have six people out of fifteen. Like houses. Try building a barracks. The Try barracks building a barracks. The barracks. Da, da, da. Barracks complete. Now you can create soldiers. Click the barracks, then click the create. Sixty food, twenty gold. Selecting different buildings or units. Well, I need Gives some different food. options in the lower left corner of and the screen. Gold. I need to create four. Well, I don't need That's anything. I have all the resources create I need three more, already. And you'll have enough soldiers to protect this area oh. and win the scenario. Oh, click the barracks the scenario. and quickly click the create militia button three more times to make three soldiers. I already did that. Did that. Yeah. Okay, one more time and we are done. Now that you have a few soldiers, you'll be able to defend this area against English attacks. New 
new achievement. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Now that we have militias stationed across the border, the English have slowed their raids. But face it, Longshank's army will be another matter. The wicked English king has yet to bring his famous longbows to bear. Our militias could only get us so far. We are going to need more advanced weapons. Okay. Four, research and technology. Rumors creep in from the south of a giant who leads the forces of Scotland, his great sword driving through earth and man and horse alike. If this mythical knight can hold the English advance, it will give us time to develop the arms we need. Even now, our smiths are forging swords and fletchers are making arrows and crossbow bolts. Right. English use very advanced weapons and armor. To win, you will need to advance to the feudal age oh. and repel the English raids. Oh. You're going to need to research some technologies of your own to increase the strength of your civilization. For example, researching loom makes your villagers hard to kill. To research loom, click the town center then click the research loom button. 50 extra points. Ma plus one normal, plus just, plus two piece armor. Good. Okay. Researching technology costs resources, but improves your civilization. While you're researching, you can put your villagers to work and use your military units to explore. I need some wood. I can add this to control one, to click one and have all selected. That's pretty cool. I'm going to create some extra villages. New technologies and buildings become available when you advance to a new age. To advance from the Dark Age to the Feudal Age, you need 500 food. And some gold, why not? In addition to gathering food in forage bushes, Villagers can herd sheep or hunt deer for food. Tiyatika. That sound is pretty good. Each time you create a villager, shh. Let's explore now you have enough food to advance to this the way. Age. However, you also need two buildings from your current age. You already have a barracks, so now have your villagers build a mill. The mill is a drop-off point for food, so build it next to your food source. Here, uh, The mill. I'm going to. To hunt all these, I don't know, these deers. So I'm going to build it right there. So the villagers don't need to walk very long distance. Um, okay. Now you can advance from the Dark Age to the Feudal Age. Click your town center, then click the advanced to feudal age button. Okay. Good. 
feudal age. You're on your way to the feudal age. That's right. Uh, some more good. Well, I don't know where they can attack me because I already explored everything and <laughs> they are going to are to spawn some. Yeah, exactly. Come on, kill him. Now that the battle is over, create some extra militia units at the barracks to replenish the forces. 64, 20 gold. That's cool. And yeah, the lumber camp. I'm going to create a lumber camp here. Because everyone is taking too long to take wood. Okay. Congratulations! Advancing to the next stage is the best way to improve your civilization. Near the minimap at the lower right corner of the screen is the idle villager button. Click it and locate villagers who are not currently assigned to a task. Now that you're in the feudal age, you can upgrade your militia to men-at-arms. Click the barracks, then click upgrade to men-at-arms. I do villagers. Wait. Uh, upgrade the men-at-arms. Okay. 100 food, 40 gold, yep. Upgrading You're fine. to man-at-arms will change all your militia units to the more powerful men-at-arms. The English are attacking again! Teach them a lesson with your new men at arms! There is one another here, yeah. This knight is quite powerful. The English are no match for your warriors. Of course they they don't. They're fucking awesome. Victory. Longshanks has invaded, stormed and sacked the city of Perth. It's worse. He's captured the fabled Stone of Scone and declared himself King of Scotland. If we cannot bring about a victory in battle soon, then the Scottish armies will be too demoralized to put up any fight at all. If this mythical Scottish giant does exist, I wish he'd get his forces up to Stirling, where we shall next do battle. Well, I'm going to finish the video here. In the next one I will be doing the this three to end the first uh, tutorial and that's it. I hope you have a great day friend. Thanks a lot for watching and see you soon.